Hey guys, welcome to this video where today we'll be creating this awesome piece of Bruce Lee. This is a 12 layer multi-layer stencil, so if you'd like to be able to make this, then check this video out. Now the first thing you want to do is open up your software. In this video we'll be using Inkscape because one, it's free, and two, it's really good for creating multi-layer stencils. So let's start by bringing in our image. Now I think I've saved mine on my desktop here. All the files needed for this tutorial will be found in the description below if you want to follow along. So the first thing you want to do with the import options is just make sure the embed function is ticked on. Everything else you can leave as default and hit the OK button. Now we just put the uh, image in the middle of our workspace and make sure it is selected. And then the next thing you do is go path and trace bitmap. Okay, with these options, the first thing you want to do is tick the live preview option. And you'll see that it starts out by having the um, default black and white. Now what we want is colors. So if you come down here to the colors options, tick that and you'll see in our preview, it's already got all of our colors. Now, if we want to do a 12 layer multi-layer stencil, then all we need to do is come into our scans and play around with a number of layers until we're happy with the amount of detail we can sort of get in this image. So I'm pretty happy with 12 and we've got a couple of other options here. So the first one is smooth. If you untick that, you can see you get a bit more detail in the hair. I'm going to leave it on just for the purposes of making it easier to cut later on. And the other option here is stack scan. So what this option does is if you have it on, what it will do is it'll take each color and create a stencil over the top of each other. And that becomes very heavy. Whereas if you have it off, what it does is it takes each color and creates its own little stencil without, um, I think it'll be better if I show you. So the last option here is remove background. Now I usually leave this unticked cause you kind of want your background in there and you need to know what color it is. So let's create one with stacked scans on and one with stacked scans off and you can sort of see the difference. So that's with stacked scans on and let's create another one with stacked scans off. Wait. So that's stacked scans on, select our image again, hit OK and that should be stacked scans off. And once you've created your stencils, you can hit the X button up there now, once we've created our stencil layers, this is pretty much it. That's how easy it is. You click on the stencil layers and you go right click and ungroup and ungroup with the stack scans off. Now, what you'll notice if with the stack scans on is behind our sort of darkest layer is that it's sort of filled in all that color behind that stencils. So the benefits of this option is that if you don't line up your stencils correctly. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of forgiveness. The only thing with this is that you have to make sure that all your stencils are laid correctly. Um, with the stat scans off, just to show you by comparison, so with the stat scans off, if I take off the top layer, you'll notice that it actually cuts out the layer behind it as well. So for me, I prefer this method as it allows me to organize the layers in a way that I prefer. So I always like to work from the darkest color to the lightest. So I'll prefer this option. The only downside to working with this method is that if you don't line up each layer perfectly, you'll end up with little gaps in between. So if I misalign my layers, then, well, you kind of notice it right away. Whereas with this one, if you don't line them up perfectly there's a little room for forgiveness and this one's a bit easier for beginners I'd say the only thing is you'll notice that you'll be using a lot more paint and your piece at the end will be a bit heavier so let's get rid of the ones we don't need as I'll be choosing this option the next thing we want to do is organize all our stencils onto layers so you here up in the top right hand corner, you can notice a little layer option box. So we'll just click the plus button here to create a new layer. And we want to create about 13 layers. Because everything at the moment is on layer one. So we want to separate them off into their own individual layers. So starting with the darkest color, I always like to do that. Um, right click and then click move to layer. So I'm going to move that onto layer number two move and then come into the top right hand box and untick that 
Now I'm going to do this for the rest of the layers and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, now that we've organized all of our stencils onto their own individual layers, we can switch them all back on. And the next step would be to choose our colors of the spray cans. Now the way I like to do it is, hang on a second, let me switch these all on. So now, theoretically, we should have nothing on layer one. So I'll just select that layer. And then what I'll do is I'll go to my downloads folder and over here somewhere I should have a color chart. So just click OK. And over here I'm going to be using loop spray cans and I've just brought in the manufacturer's sort of color chart. And right now what I can do is you can see that because it's on layer one it goes behind all my stencils. And I can go through one by one and match up the colors to the color chart and choose out the individual colors that I need to go to the store and buy them. So the only reason why I'm using loop colors is because there's an awesome store that's local and they've got all the colors that I need in stock and they're pretty good cans as well. But of course use whatever is available to you. So once you've done that the next thing to do would be go to go through one by one on each of these individual stencils and create bridges. Now creating bridges is what we do when we don't want to accidentally cut out some detailed areas. Now this layer is not so bad, let's find one that's a bit worse. Okay, so let's go in, zoom in a bit. If you want to zoom in, you can click on this little zoom to fit page in window and that sort of zooms everything in. Now the areas that we want to create bridges in are little islands like this. So you see if we cut this out on our Cricut, we'll end, that piece will end up falling out and we'll lose that sort of patch of detail in that. Now if you want to keep that, a good way to do it is come over here, click on the Erase Existing Paths, and then come over to your stencil and cut out the colored area. Whoops. The reason why I did that is because I did not have my stencil selected, so come up to your arrow key, select your stencil, then click on your eraser, and then you should be able to cut, and you see it sort of erased a little bit of the color there, and what that will do is create a little bridge so this when this piece gets cut out it will be attached to the rest of your stencil which will be this all this white in here so what you want to do is go through the thinnest areas of the of the outsides and now this area should be kept in your stencil and you'll retain that little bit of detail so you'll notice there's a few other islands in here so if you work your way through creating bridges to all these little islands basically on each individual layer so this does take a little bit of time but it definitely makes a big difference to the final product so the more time you take doing this the better your final product will be especially this one through here this is a pretty big area and that's a crucial bit of the stencil I would say and then through here the back of the hair that's pretty important they definitely want that once you're done creating all your islands on each individual stencil what you can do is switch all of your layers back on or just go show all layers that's a quicker option and then select all of your layers oops and then go file save as now at this stage you're pretty much ready to cut out your stencils so save it to your desktop or wherever you prefer and call it Bruce Lee stencil and what we're going to do is bring it into our Cricut software and cut it out. So we can downsize this, get rid of that, open up our Cricut design software and ready, get ready to cut out our stencils. So while that's loading, the paper I'll be using is 200 GSM paperboard poster board from Quill. This is good for both my stencils and for painting on. Now once my Cricut Design software is loaded, we'll click on New Project, Upload, Upload, and then Browse, and then I should be able to find my Bruce Lee stencil here. And then we click the Upload button. Now you'll see that it's actually imported it when with all the colors, and that's the beauty of working with Inkscape is that it works really well 
with the Cricut Design software. So let's go and insert our image onto our cutting space. Okay, now that we've got our image loaded on our cutting space, you'll notice that it's already brought in all of the layers from Inkscape as well. So it's a good thing we organized those. And the first thing you want to do here is scale it correctly to the paper you'll be using. So I'm going to be working on A3 paper, which I think is around eight inches, if I'm not mistaken. The other thing you want to do is leave a little bit of space in the top left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner to create some markers. And then uh, what we can do once we've scaled all of our layers correctly is switch off the ones we do not need. Add a couple of markers, which we want to add to each individual layer. Maybe we'll switch on the first two so we know where our corners are. And we'll create a text box and we'll just create a simple plus there. So we'll have a plus in that corner. And we'll just hit control V. Another plus in this bottom corner here just outside of it. I'll switch them all back on because I think I need to move them ever so slightly. So just move it across, just to have a bit more space for my marker up here. Once you're happy with that, you can switch off all the layers you do not need. Now one really important step before you go to cut is to select your markers and the layer stencil that you want. Whoop, just one, two, three. So we've got the two markers and the layer we want to cut and weld them together. So this creates one layer and then once you've done that, you're ready to cut. So we can now select make it. And that brings it up onto our cutting board and gives us a little preview. So for this one, obviously because I'm working on A3, I need to use the larger cutting mats, which I have. Um, obviously you'll need to work to whatever scale suits you best. So we'll hit OK for the warning here, yes. And then continue. Okay, so the next important step right now is to select the correct material. This is a really important step that you don't want to overlook. And because I'm using 200 GSM poster board here, we want to match it up to the correct setting in the software so it cuts at the right speed and you don't get any weird bits. So right now I can see under cardstock I've got 260 GSM and I think that's pretty much close enough. So I'm going to select done and we're basically ready to cut. Now we're cutting out the stencils on my Cricut Explore Air 2. Now if I didn't have this machine, there would be no way I'd be doing this many layers because it takes ages, even on the machine, to cut out each layer. So for all these 11 layers, it took about two and a half hours. But if I was cutting this out by hand, this would take forever.